Welcome to a new tutorial. In this case, I'm going to show you how to produce an out of sample forecast for Brent crude oil price growth using Stata's built in forecasting tool. My name is Juan Amico, I'm an economist, and I submit regularly videos about applied time series analysis and forecasting. So, if that is a topic that you're interested in, please feel free to subscribe to my channel to get more content like this one. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you step by step how to produce a forecast like this. But please note there is a link in the description of the video where you can buy the do file and you'll be able to produce all these results. Um, know that by buying the do file, you're also helping the channel to keep growing, to keep creating more quality content for you. Also, if there is any topic that you would like me to cover in the future, please send me an email. You have my email in the description of the video. Instead, I already imported my data and I already created a time variable. You already know how to do this, but if you don't, there's going to be a link in the description with the step-by-step -step instructions on how to generate time series variables. Now, the first thing that I would like to do is to produce a graph of my variable oil. So then you're going to get an idea of the behavior of this variable. Is it stationary? Is it non-stationary? Now we're going to get a better image. So as you can see, oil has uh, an upward trend. So this is already telling us that the variable is non-stationary. I'm going to close here. We can use the Dickey filler test. And we're going to get the results that we cannot reject the null hypothesis that my series has a unit root. So my series is non-stationary. Now, what I would like to do is to generate a new variable, which is going to be growth. Let's give it this name, growth. And it's going to basically produce a variable that is going to show the all prices in growth rates. So the formula would be 100 times my variable oil. Now we have to divide this by the lag value of oil. So the lag operator is L dot, and then the name of my variable, which is oil. I'm going to then subtract one, close parenthesis, and that's going to be the formula to generate my oil prices series into growth rates. So we hit enter, we get here the new variable that we just generated. We can produce the graph. And here we go. Now you can see that this variable does look stationary. Next, I'm going to show you how to use the forecasting tool. You're going to go into the option statistics. You're going to go into the option that is called time series, and then you're going to select the option forecasting. Now in forecasting, you're going to get um, the following window where you can create a new forecast model or you can create a new forecast model, but you can give it a name. In this case, let's call it oil. And we can go into time settings and make sure that in our case, my time variable years, it's yearly data. So I'm going to select OK. And now I'm going to submit this. You're going to see that I have no model assigned in the memory. But now when I hit Submit, you see that Stata has now created a new forecast model that is called OIL. Let's move into the next step. We have to estimate a model. Now, what is great about this is that you have so many different type of models that you can estimate. You can use VAR models, VEC models, Markov switching regression models, and all these other different specifications. We're going to go with linear regression. I'm going to show you how you can produce um, a forecast using an autoregressive um, specification. So we're going to select here, go, and you have to assign the dependent variable. We want to explain the the growth in prices of oil um, using some independent variables. In this case, it's going to be autoregressive components. Now, just we're going to use pack the command growth. And now we're going to get the partial autocorrelation function. And we can see that there are significant spikes at different lags. In this case, let's keep the model parsimonies. I'm going to use 
the least amount of lags that we can specify in the model in this case would be two lags so i'm going to close this let's go back into the into the tool and we're going to use two lags then so to use two lags you're going to use the command l capital letters you're going to select one to two we want to include the first two lags dot and then the name of the variable growth there's other options you can suppress the cons constant term in this case i don't want to suppress the constant term um, there's different things that we can include for example um, standard errors we can use default but you can use robust cluster robust robust is if there's some signals of heteroscedasticity in your model you can modify the way that the uh, the software is going to calculate the standard errors so in this case let's just go with the default standard errors we're going to hit ok and you can see that stata is here computing all the model so that's perfect we're getting um, just doing some analysis we're getting that the constant is statistically significant the first lag doesn't seem to be statistically significant but the second lag of the growth in the old prices seems to be statistically significant so we're going to keep it like this for now this is just a, a tutorial for you to understand how to work with the status built-in forecasting tool and how to produce out of sample forecasts so let's go next i'm going to save the estimation results let's just call it oil again hit on submit next we have the build option in the build option we have to use the estimation results from a specific model we have already called oil and it's given us a couple of options here that we are not going to be using we're just using the following command we are adding estimation results to a forecast model the model is oil we already assigned that name we're going to hit on submit and here you get forecast estimate oil and now we are getting uh, the estimation results from the regression we're going to hit on the option solve and this is where um, the forecasting period begins now how we're going to produce the out of sample forecast the first thing is seeing up to what date our data goes so i hit on browse scroll down and our data goes to the year 2023 let's try to forecast the next four years i'm going to close here let's add ts append add and we're going to add four new years into my sample this is the command here we go now if i type browse you will see that we are getting now more observations 2024 2025 26 and 27 of course of course that we don't have the values for those years because my data set goes until the year 2023 it goes until this year the idea is that now we'll be able to forecast the next four years so i'm going to close in here i go back into my model um, and i'm going to assign prefix for forecast variables you just need to add a prefix let's just add fc which goes for forecast now we need to add from when do we need to start forecasting so we need to start forecasting from the year 2024 we don't have the year 2024 of course that's what we want to start forecasting from and you can specify here when it needs to end the forecast or you can tell stata how many periods ahead you would like to forecast i would like to forecast the next four years that's what we have defined and one of the things i would like to include in here is use actual values if the val sorry if available so now whenever we have data this is we have data for the years 1988 to 2023 stata is just going to use those values and it's going to be producing out of sample forecast for the next four years now for the simulation we can add many different options in this case i'm going to select random normal parameter vectors and i would like to get the mean and i would like to get the standard deviations because then we can build the confidence intervals so in this case let's assign the name se1 
And there's many other things that you can play around with, of course. You can see the reporting, you can see which different solver do you want to use. Um, for example, Newton Raphson um, solver, you want to use Gauss, Bryden Powell, any, any type of solver. Um, in this case, we're going to leave things to default for now. We're not going to get too deep with the explanations of the different solvers. But that's all for now. We're going to hit on submit. And that's, that's great. You guys have now created your forecast for the next four periods. You're going to see that you have um, created the variable FC1 growth, which is the mean forecast, and you have created the standard error uh, forecast as well. Now we can hit on browse, and we're going to go. Uh, this is the, the mean forecast. You can see that this is the option that we specified in, in, in the builder, in the model builder. We said for the in sample, we don't want you to use any values. We want you to keep the values, the original values. But now for the out of sample portion, we want to create the next four values for the forecast. So this is what we are getting here. So that's that's great. So now what are we going to do now? We're going to start working on the graph and on the upper and lower bounds. Now I would like to generate the confidence band for my forecast. So let's select, let's use the command gen for generate. And I'm going to call this UV, which is upper bound. You of course can assign any name you would like. And we're going to use the following. We're going to use the variable, uh, the mean forecast plus, this is going to be the, the statistic, the normal statistic multiplied by the standard error. We're going to copy this, enter, and here we have generated the upper bound. Now let's paste this command. Let's call lower bound. And now we're going to, instead of adding, we're going to be subtracting this portion. So now one last step, let's go into browse again. I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to select in the editor mode. And I'm going to copy this value, which is the last value for the year 2023 this is the last value that we have available and i'm going to use in the forecast it's going to be the first value is going to be this the upper bound is going to start from um from this value as well and the lower bound is going to start from that value as well hit on enter i'm going to close and now i can just graph all these things together I'm going to graph FC1 growth, the variable growth, the variable upper bound, and the variable lower bound. Now let's see how the graph looks like. And that's perfect. We have produced uh, the forecast. Now the next thing we can do is we can use this code, which I already taught how to do this. I'm going to add the link in the description of the video where I, I taught how to produce, how to edit the graphs to make it look like this. There's a link in the description of the video, like I said, and you will be able to, to create a graphic like this one. Now, this is going to be all the content for today. I hope that you did find this tutorial useful. Um, I hope that you start forecasting variables and um, I'm going to provide in the data set, you can download the data set. So of course you can try to replicate this content step by step. You can also, like I mentioned, if you guys are interested, you can buy the do file as well. It's in the, it's, it's in my, um, it's in the link in the description. And like I said before, it's going to be helping my channel to keep creating more content. Well, once again, thank you very much. I hope you enjoy the material and I hope to see you in the next video where we are going to be learning many more forecasting techniques. Thank you.